Section 7.4 is on double and half angle identities. So again, it's dealing with uh, an angle in our trig function that we want to write as two times an angle or one half an angle. Uh, but before we look at that, I want to show you where these come from. So these come from using our angle addition uh, sum and difference formulas. So for example, if we have sine of 2 theta, that's sine of twice an angle, that's the same as sine of theta plus theta, where 2 theta is theta plus theta. If I use my um, angle sum formula, I have sine theta cosine theta plus cosine theta sine theta. That's the sum formula or sum identity for sine. Um, and then when I add those together, sine cosine is the same as cosine sine. So I really just have 2 sine theta cosine theta. I can do the same thing for cosine. I can rewrite this as cosine of theta plus theta. When I do that, I use my sum formula for cosine, which says cosine theta times cosine theta minus sine theta times sine theta. If I multiply these together, this is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So this is one, um, one way to write the cosine identity. If I use my sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1, and I solve this, let's say we solve it for sine, so I'm going to move cosine over, I get sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. I can take this, plug it in for sine, and I get cosine squared theta minus 1 minus cosine squared theta, just substituting in. When I distribute this negative, this cosine becomes a positive. I have cosine squared theta minus 1 plus cosine squared theta, which equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So I can rewrite this double angle formula both of those ways. And I could come over here and solve for cosine, plug that in for cosine here, and get a third angle identity. So we're going to see that we have three options that we can use for cosine. Similarly, we can do the same thing for tangent and end up with a double angle formula for tangent as well. So here are our three double angle identities. We have sine 2 theta equals sine 2 theta cosine theta. Cosine 2 theta, notice we have three identities here. This one, the first one, we might use if we know both cosine and sine, because that's easy to plug things in. We might use the second one if we only knew cosine, and we might use the third one if we only knew sine. And using any of those three, I'm going to get the same answer for cosine 2 theta. And tangent 2 theta is given by 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. Again, you could derive that using the sum formula for tangent. So let's look at how we might use this. Here's an example. If sine theta equals 3 fourths and theta is in quadrant 1, find cosine of 2 theta. So there's some important information here. Uh, theta in quadrant 1 means everything is positive. That's our A quadrant for all things positive. So sine is positive and cosine theta is going to be positive as well. If I needed to find cosine theta, there's a couple ways I could do that. I could do it using um, my Pythagorean theorem and saying if I'm looking from an angle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and I could find my missing side here. I also can say sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Sine squared is 3 fourths squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. This is 9 sixteenths plus cosine squared theta. This is really 16 over 16 if I want to rewrite that. Taking the 9 sixteenths over, cosine squared theta equals 7 over 16. Square rooting both sides. Cosine theta equals um, root 7 over 16. When I take a, oops, over 4, sorry. Um, when I take the square root, I get plus or minus, but because I'm in quadrant 1, I am a positive function or a positive value. Um, so if I needed to find cosine, I could do that. 
I also could notice I'm looking for cosine of 2 theta, and for my cosine double angle formulas, I have three options. And I could just use the option that uses um, sine. So there's one uh, identity that says cosine 2 theta equals uh, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So if I use that one, um, I didn't necessarily need to find this information, but we need that for our next problem anyway, so it's good we did that. Um, so this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared is 9 over 16. This is 1 minus 18 over 16. This is 16 over 16 minus 18 over 16, which is negative 2 sixteenths, which reduces to negative 1 eighth. So cosine of 2 theta is going to be negative 1 eighth. So then we have, what is tangent 2 theta? So in the same problem, I want to figure out now what is tangent. Well, tangent theta is sine over cosine. And I was given, let me erase that, sine theta is 3 fourths. And I found in the last slide there that cosine theta um, was root 7 over 4. So what I want to do now is simplify this for and figure out what tangent is. So tangent theta equals, if I do my fraction magic here, that 4 comes up and multiplies with 3, this 4 comes down and multiplies with the root 7, eventually they will end up canceling. I have 3 over root 7. I need to rationalize that. So this is 3 root 7 over 7. So then I want to come over and do my double angle identity for tangent. That says tangent of 2 theta equals 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. 2 times tangent is 2 times 3 root 7 over 7. 1 minus tangent squared, that's going to be 3 root 7 over 7. Okay, on the top I have 6 root 7 over 7. This is squared. On the bottom I have 1 minus 9 times 7 over 49. When I combine, I uh, get a common denominator on the bottom there, um, and combine my fractions, I'm going to get um, 6 root 7 over 7 over negative 14 over 49. Again, doing my fractions, this 7 comes down to the 14, that 49 comes up to the top. Um, after I do all that and simplify, you should get um, negative 3 root 7. So maybe try that out on your paper and see if you get the same answer. Okay, and just like we have double angle identities, we also have half angle identities, which takes an angle theta and um, multiplies it by a half, and we have these identities here. These come from manipulating our double angle identities and solving for um, sine, cosine, or tangent. If you would like to see that done, you can check your book, or you can come find me at another time and I can show you where these come from. So we have sine of theta over 2 is plus or minus root 1 minus cosine over 2. Cosine theta over 2 is plus or minus root 1 plus cosine over 2. And tangent is plus or minus the root of 1 minus cosine over 1 plus cosine. Um, when we have denominators, oops, denominators in, in fractions, this can equal 0. And that will be 0 when cosine equals 1. So that's the only... Um, that's the only value for where this would be undefined. Here's my little piggy in the corner, and he says, oink, oink. So here's an example of how to use half-angle identities. Use the half-angle identities to find the exact value of each function. So our first one is cosine of pi eighths. And what we want to do is we want to take pi eighths here, and we want to try and write it um, as a half-angle. So we want to say, what angle multiplied by a half equals pi eighths? Well, pi eighths equals pi fourths multiplied by a half. Because again, pi eighths isn't one of these angles that we've been dealing with. We've been dealing with pi fourths, pi thirds, pi halves, pi sixths, 
um, pi. So looking at those quadrantal angles and our special right triangles, we want to change this pi fourths into um, into values that we can find. So or, or the pi eighths. So pi fourths is a good one. If we multiply that by a half or divide it by two, same thing, we end up with pi eighths. So we can rewrite cosine of pi eighths is really cosine of pi fourths over two. So that's a half angle identity, and we can use our half angle formula, our identity, and that is one plus cosine pi fourths, right? Pi fourths here, this is just our theta. So my theta here is pi fourths over two. Now, one important thing, pi fourths is in quadrant one. If you draw pi fourths, it lands here in quadrant one. That means this identity is going to be positive. So I'm gonna, I can drop that negative sign now. Um, I also want to have drawn on my paper my special right triangles. I'm using a 45 here, so I'm gonna have one, root two over two, root two over two. So when I'm looking for a cosine of pi fourths, I have it right in front of me. So this is going to be the positive square root of 1 plus cosine of pi fourths is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's root 2 over root 2 over 1 over 2. I need to get a common denominator on the top there, so that 1 is going to turn into a 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 all over 2. Underneath the root, I have 2 plus root 2 over 2 over 2. This 2 comes down here. And you have the square root of 2 plus root 2 over 4. When I take the square root of the top, it stays the same, 2 plus root 2. When I take the square root of the bottom, I get 2. So your final answer, the best you can simplify for our sakes, is going to be the square root of 2 plus root 2 over 2.